Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Aftcast Tenerife Afternoons. I'm your host, Tim Dowd. Today's Thursday, the 18th of March, 2021. On today's show, we're going to have a little bit of the weather, the latest in the COVID saga. We're going to go over to Janet Anscombe and see what she's been saying. A quick look at the headlines of the government of the Canary Islands. Enjoy the show. Well, there's going to be plenty of weather in the next few days, so they say. The weather's been really, really bright and blue. There's a little bit of haze covering La Gomera, but there's been no clouds, temperatures in the low 20s, a lot warmer in the sun. They're promising sun for the next 14 days. They are saying high teens, low 20s, but here on the coast, we usually get the the low 20s. Not a cloud in the sky. And wonderful, wonderful, wonderful warmth. That was your weather for today, Thursday, the 18th of March, 2021. COVID-19 updates. I've got the figures for yesterday, the 17th of March, active COVID ticker. Canary Islands total, 4,238. That's down from the day before. Tenerife, 2,247, also down. Arona, 87, up by one. Adeche, 109, which is down. And Granadilla de Abona, 89, which is up quite a bit, actually. And the seven-day average has just started to drop at 78.4. That was your COVID for today. Now we're going over to Janet Anscombe at janetanscombe.com. A couple of headlines here. The EU Commission unveils plan for digital green certificate. So we'll have a look at that. And also the COVID-19 update, 650 more cases and 12 further deaths in the last three days as we await Easter measures announcement tomorrow, which is, of course, today. And the Cabildo fills out details of Mascar Barranco reopening. Let's start with that one. The Cabildo has issued further details about the reopening of Masca Barranco. The walk will be available from Saturday the 27th of March, on foot only, as explained yesterday, with the starting and end point being the visitor centre in the hamlet itself. To start with, to ensure that things are operating as desired, numbers will be limited to 25 and walks will only be permitted at weekends and on public holidays between 8am and 6pm in the summer and 8am and 5pm in the winter. Outside these hours, when the access control system won't be in operation, the path will be closed for security reasons. Reservations can be made on the official website Camino Barranco con de Masa Com. At the moment it's free, but it seems that a charge will be imposed after this pilot phase has been completed and the Cabildo has approved the price, with differentiated rates for residents and non-residents. Please know that given the scarcity of parking spaces in Masca, the Cabildo says that walkers must use public transport to get to Masca from Santiago del Tedi or Buena Vista. Well, that was uh, interesting. If you're a walker or a hiker, they're reopening the Masca Trail, which is good. Unfortunately, you used to be able to go down and then get a boat round to Los Gigantes. But now, if you go down, you've got to walk back up. Let's have a look at the update for the COVID from Janet's point of view. Updated 17th of March, just three days, but 650 more cases, nearly half of them in Tenerife, and Gran Canaria's accumulated cases now over 18,000. Sadly, we also have 12 more deaths. Whatever is announced for Easter tomorrow, which is today, is very unlikely to include any sort of loosening of restrictions. So, good news and not good news. And the final one... 
EU Commission unveils plan for digital green certificate. To comply with measures trying to limit the spread of COVID, travellers to and within the EU have been asked to date to provide any of a range of documents, like test results, personal declarations, etc. But obviously, these have not been of a standardised format. And the EU Commission says that this has resulted in travellers experiencing problems when moving within the EU, as well as generating reports of fraudulent or forged documents. The Commission has therefore been working on a common approach to what's been popularly called a vaccine passport, and today it has announced plans for a digital green certificate, avoiding the word passport because it implies a universal entitlement and therefore could be suggestive of discrimination against those not yet vaccinated. As yet, this is just a legislative proposal, which still has to be approved by both the EU Council and the European Parliament. If and when it is in place, however, it will be a temporary measure until the World Health Organization declares the pandemic over, and it will provide proof that the person has either been vaccinated against COVID or has recovered from it or alternatively has received a negative test result. This last because the EU says it would be discriminatory otherwise against those who couldn't have had the vaccine at the point they needed to travel. The certificate will be available free of charge, either in electronic or paper form, and will include a QR code to guarantee authenticity. The Commission says that it also adopted a complementary proposal to ensure that the certificates will be issued to non-EU nationals who reside in member states, e.g. British residents in Spain. And it stresses that while there will be a separate proposal for non-EU citizens, which are necessary for legal reasons, there will be no difference in treatment of citizens and eligible non-EU citizens. Importantly, the certificate is not intended as a precondition for travel, but neither is it a guarantee of free movement. What it will do is free the holder from any testing or quarantine requirements, and member states would have to accept it as they would be required to accept any vaccine proof that entitled arrivals to a waiver from restrictions set to that country. Although the certificate is intended for EU nationals and residents within the EU, the plan also allows, subject to Commission approval, countries like Spain, with an economy heavily reliant on tourism, to agree bilateral agreements with non-EU member states like the UK. There is an EU Commission Q&A page here, and she puts a link to it, on the proposals, but obviously this is still early days. Spain, however, will welcome the announcement because it has been pushing for months for such a scheme under pressure from the tourism sector to introduce such a plan unilaterally for economic reasons, something the country did not want to do if there was a coordinated EU system. So that's good news for us. I'd like to thank Janet Anscombe for publishing a fantastic website if you want to read more or find out how to move over here she's got a lot of details there and uh, go to janetanscombe.com so let's have a quick look at the government website gobierno de canarias.org the Presidency, Maria Isabel Nazco, Dolores Cobea and Maria del Rosario Alvarez, Canary Awards 2021. Health records 248 cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. The single electronic headquarters becomes operational, which optimizes the relationship of citizens with the administration. That's a single sign-on for all your dealings with the government. Uh, the Canarian government increases by €571,000 the aid to farmers affected by the 2020 storm. Uh, the Young Orchestra of Canary Islands will make a new tour of the eight islands at Easter. Uh, a couple of other subheadlines here. The Canarian Youth Observatory enables a new tool to obtain updated data. The HUC confirms efficiency of telemedicine in patients with hepatitis C in drug dependence care centres. And the government of the Canary Islands recognises seven teachers and three educational centres with the Biera and Clavijo 2020 awards. 
Okay, if you need to know any more about that, just nip over to gobiernodecanarias.org slash noticias. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for listening today. Please like and subscribe or download or favorite the podcast. Don't forget you can follow us on youtube.com slash LWMST. We go live three times a week, Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5.55. We have a Facebook page at LWMST and we do pictures on Instagram, living with MS Tenerife. Don't forget to go over to our website, timothydown.com, where you can send us a message. Learn how to sponsor the channel. Find out how you can join me live on screen, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And read the blog with all the past episodes of everything we do. Stay safe. From the lovely island of Tenerife in the sunshine, it's Tim Dowd saying goodbye. <laughs>